So now you're not just a musician and you're not just an awesome husband and father, but you are quite a humanitarian. And I loved what you were doing last year and touring the country. And I know that you're going to be doing it again. We will get back to um, better than normal, I'm gonna call it, when all this blows over. But let's talk about that. Let's talk about human rights and rocking for human rights and how you embrace that and any story you wanna tell how it all began. Sure. Well, several years ago now, I had a friend of mine who was working on a project where they were creating these really beautiful public service announcement videos. If you go to humanrights.com, you can see them. And they're essentially bringing to life the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is a document that was signed. So World War II happened, was incredibly devastating, obviously for virtually the entire world. Millions and millions of people died, incredible amount of destruction. And out of the ashes of that, the, the countries of the world came together and said, okay, we, we've got to figure out a better way to resolve our conflicts, right? They, they, we can't let this happen again, no matter what. Because you'd had World War I, and then not very many years later, you had World War II, where it was like 20 years later, um, uh, an even more devastating war broke out um, that, that impacted every country in the world. So they said, we can't have that happen again. So they founded the United Nations at the time. And one of the first things they did as a part of that charter, as a part of sort of deciding what is this? What is this? Why is this important? Why are we doing this? What matters? They came up with 70 universal human rights that every single person on the planet is supposed to have. And that's fantastic. And they finally articulated those rights and they had never done that before, but it didn't really have the force of law. So they ratified it and, and everyone agreed, yes, this is how it should be. But 70 plus years later now, here we are, and there have definitely been improvements in many areas of the world, no question. But I think anybody who follows anything going on related to human rights knows there's a whole lot of work left to do. I come from a background, uh, my parents were both teachers, they're retired now, but I grew up overseas, I've traveled a lot. I was there when the Berlin Wall came down in, in Germany. I was there for the fall of communism, the Iron Curtain, all of that, and it really had a huge impact on me, even more so in hindsight. I didn't actually realize what a big impact it had. And so several years ago, a friend of mine was working on these public service announcements, uh, these beautiful videos, and they needed music for one of them. And I had never heard of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I, I didn't know anything about this. I, I understood the concept of human rights, but I didn't know that they'd been articulated and it was something that people should be aware of. And then I saw the, these, I saw the finished product of these public service announcements and just how beautiful they were. And they were really inspiring. And I said at the time, I, I'd really like to do something with this. I'd like to go out and, and uh, share this information with audiences. How, how am I gonna go about doing this? And I thought about it for a little bit longer. And then I finally came up with the idea uh, of my 501c3 nonprofit. So it's a registered nonprofit with, uh, with the IRS called Rock for Human Rights. So we go mainly to schools. We've done churches and other events as well, so all over the world and all over the US. We play live music that speaks to particular human rights precepts. So there's these 30 human rights that are listed out. Uh, and we try to bring those to life with individual songs. And then we show some of the public service announcements. And then we really talk to kids about, okay, well, so what does human rights mean to you? And I said, okay, well, I don't want to go into to Mrs. Field's fifth grade class here and, and talk about doom and gloom and destruction and how terrible everything is, right? Uh, what, how am I going to bring to life these concepts, but in a way that's uplifting and the kids will really appreciate and enjoy. And so we really decided to focus on the positive. So we really think about what, it, what is it, how do you explain the concept of human rights, rights to a kid in fifth grade? And the way that we do it is that we bring it home to their school, to their family, to their community. And we talk about what they can do. So I've had people ask me, you know, are you here representing the UN? Are you... Um, you know, what, what is this? And is this appropriate for kids? And I say, number one, I'm not representing the UN. Uh, I, I'm not banging the drum for any government or institution because I don't believe that governments or institutions change the world. People do. And es especially individuals who stand up and, and speak up for a better world. That's how things improve. And so my job is to empower kids to understand that they have much more power than they realize. We talk about bullying. We talk about setting a good example. We talk about 
uh, how easy it is to either make the environment around you more positive or less positive by a thousand little things you do. Sometimes being an advocate for human rights is not saying that really mean-spirited thing. And it's really incredible. Kids of all ages, all cultures, everywhere around the world that we do this with translators or in English or whatever, it is remarkable the feedback that we get and how even really young kids can absolutely understand these concepts. Kids have a very strong sense of justice, of right and wrong. And when you tap into that, they really appreciate it and they respond very strongly. It's a visceral thing with kids of all ages. I think as a young person, you get pushed around a lot, right or wrong. Sometimes you get pushed around just by nature of being a kid. A lot of being a kid is crowd control, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> stand in line, wait over here, don't talk, keep your body like this. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work being a kid. And so you, you get over it real quick, right? And so kids, when you tap into this and say, you are powerful, you matter, your ideas matter, your behavior matters, your actions matter, kids really appreciate it. It is empowering to them. And we're not expecting every kid in every audience to go join the Peace Corps or dedicate their lives to human rights. But we leave every school, every, every performance we give, we leave that environment better than we found it. And there will be one kid at every other school who does make that decision to say, this is that important to me. And I really, I do want, I want this to be something in my life uh, that I continue to, to create and, and make it a, a part of who I am and how I, how I go about living my life and what I do. Brilliant. What people don't know is how rewarding it is to do things like this. Unless you've done it, unless you've done volunteer work about something that you really are personally passionate about, you just don't know how much it recharges your batteries. I mean, I, I spent a lot of my own money and time and energy doing this kind of thing and, and I do it because I want to help, but there's a selfish component to it too. It just feels fantastic to help people. And, yeah. and especially being around kids and just uplifting them and giving them an experience they're not going to forget. Um, that, that's a, its own reward. It really is. Just it really not, is. I'm not saying that to blow smoke. It's true, truly um, just incredibly rewarding in and of itself.